سورة الأعراف بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم صاد This is a book revealed to you O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So let there not be in your chest any distress therefrom And why has this been revealed? That you may warn thereby and as a reminder to the believers So inform those who don't believe and remind those who already believe So this shows us that the Qur'an is for people who don't believe, who don't know, and it is also for those who believe, those who know. The Qur'an is for all, because the Qur'an informs and it also reminds. Follow, O mankind, what has been revealed to you from your Lord, and do not follow other than Him any allies. Little do you remember. And how many cities have we destroyed, and our punishment came to them at night, or while they were sleeping at noon. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection, for safety and well-being, because we don't know what may befall us. In the night or in the day, while we are awake or we are asleep, while we are aware or we are unaware. So every morning and every evening, as per the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make this dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afiyata fi dunya wal akhirah. That, oh Allah, I ask you for well-being, for safety in this world and in the hereafter. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah. Oh Allah, I ask you for forgiveness and well-being fi dini wa dunyaya wa ahli wa mali, in my religious and my worldly affairs and my wealth. Allahumma astur awrati wa amir rawati. Oh Allah, Conceal my faults and calm my fears. Allahumma hafadhni, O Allah, protect me. Min bayni adayya, from before me. Wa min khalfi, and behind me. Wa an yamini, wa an shimali, and protect me from my right and my left. Wa min fawqi, and protect me from above me. Wa a'udhu bi azamatika an ughtala min tahti. And I seek refuge in you from receiving unexpected harm from below me. Every morning and every evening. And their declaration when our punishment came to them was only that they said, indeed, we were wrongdoers. Then they admitted their mistake. But it was no use. فَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الَّذِينَ أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَنَسْأَلَنَّ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Then we will surely question those to whom a message was sent and we will surely question the messengers. So each person will be questioned on the Day of Judgment. Because each of you is a shepherd and each of you will be questioned about his flock. Then we will surely relate their deeds to them with knowledge. And we were not at all absent. وَالْوَزْنُ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْحَقِّ And the weighing of deeds that day will be the truth. Meaning deeds will most certainly be weighed on the Day of Judgment. In fact, people will be weighed. Their records will be weighed. Deeds will be given a tangible form. So a bite of food given in charity, if it's given with sincerity, it will be like a mountain in the scale. And this weighing will be absolutely haq wal waznu yawma idhin al haq. It will be absolutely just and fair because the mizan is not faulty, the scale is not faulty, and the deeds will be assigned their true worth on the day of judgment because the scale is haq. And remember, this scale is massive. It is able to weigh something that is as large as the skies and the earth. So it doesn't matter how many deeds a person will bring that day. Because these scales can weigh them. فَمَنْ سَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So those whose scales are heavy, it is they who will be successful. So what are the deeds that will be heavy in the scales? Allah's dhikr, the remembrance of Allah. Alhamdulillah fills the scale. Subhanallah fills half of it. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanallahi al-azim are words that are very heavy in the scales. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are two qualities or two characteristics which will not be returned by any Muslim without his entering paradise. Meaning if a person does them, then he will enter Jannah. While they're easy, those who act upon them are very few. What are they? One should say, Subhanallah, ten times after every salah. Alhamdulillah, ten times. And Allahu Akbar, ten times. 
He said, that is 150 on the tongue. How 150? Over the five prayers. But 1,500 on the scale. See that? Only 150 on the tongue, but 1,500 on the scale. And when he goes to bed, the second thing is, when he goes to bed, he should say, Allahu Akbar, 34 times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. And subhanAllah, 33 times. For that is a hundred on the tongue, but a thousand on the scale. So the dhikr of Allah is heavy in the scale. Then, husnul khuluq, good character. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِن شَيْءٍ أَثْقَلُ فِي الْمِيزَانِ مِنْ حُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ There is nothing heavier in the scale than good character. Then silence. The Prophet ﷺ said to Abu Dhar, Shall I not tell you of two things that are easy on the back but heavy in the scale? عَلَيْكَ بِحُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ وَطُولِ الصمت. That you must have good character and you must observe silence for long. Don't always be talking. Don't be so talkative. Because by the one in whose hand is my soul, no creature has done a better deed than these. So these deeds are heavy in the scale. Then we learn participating in the funeral, going for burials. Each of these brings a qirat of reward, which is heavier in the mizan than Mount Uhud. Patience over the loss of children. This is also heavy in the scales. The Prophet ﷺ said there are five things that are heavy in the scale. La ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa subhanallah, walhamdulillah. And a righteous child that dies and the parents are patient over this loss with expectation of reward. This is heavy, heavy in the scale. Also, the property that a person makes waqf, that a person dedicates in the way of Allah. That he says that, for example, this house of mine, this land of mine, I want that whatever income is made from it, it goes in the way of Allah. This will also be very heavy in the scale. In a hadith, we learn that, for example, an animal, a horse that a person dedicates in the way of Allah, then even the waste that the animal produces, it will be weighed in the mizan. وَالْوَزْنُ يَوْمَ إِذِنِ الْحَقِّ And those whose scales are light, they are the ones who will lose themselves for what injustices they were doing toward our verses. So remember, injustice will be a cause of deprivation for a person on the Day of Judgment, especially towards the Qur'an. And we have certainly established you upon the earth and made for you therein ways of livelihood. Little are you grateful. And we have certainly created you and given you form. Then we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam. So they prostrated except for Iblis. He was not of those who prostrated. Allah said, what prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? Shaitan said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. قَالَ فَهْبِطُ مِنْهَا Allah said, descend from here, get out of here, for it is not for you to be arrogant therein. So get out, indeed you are of the debased. So we see here that those who are arrogant, they don't in reality become great. They don't deserve to be near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Greatness is of the one who is humble before Allah. And those who are arrogant, are disgraced. Shaitan said, reprieve me until the day they are resurrected. Give me a long life to live. And this is why Iblis has not died since then. Allah said, indeed, you are of those who are reprieved. Iblis's prayer was granted, but he makes us believe that our prayers will never be answered. So we should not stop making dua just because we have committed a sin. Shaitan said, because you have put me in error, I will surely sit and wait for them on your straight path. This is Iblisiyya. What is Iblisiyya? The way of Iblis? Blaming Allah for one's own wrongdoing. This is what Iblis did. He said, you have put me in error, Allah. And he said that I will surely sit and wait for them on your straight path. So this shows us that Shaitan sits on the straight path to lure people away from it. In an Irishan, we learned that this trade path is oft frequented. The devils frequent it often and call out, O servant of Allah, come this other way. So hold on to the rope of Allah. Indeed, the rope of Allah is the Qur'an. So shaitan, he calls people away from the path of Allah. If a person is about to embrace Islam, are you really going to change your religion? Are you really going to change your whole life? Are you really going to do what nobody in your family has done? 
And when a person is Muslim, then even then, shaitan keeps preventing them from doing good. Are you really going to go out in the way of Allah? Are you really going to study the Qur'an? Are you really going to wear hijab? How can you do that? Shaitan stops a person from good work. He said, then I will come to them from before them and from behind them and on their right and on their left and you will not find most of them grateful to you. Subhanallah. See, the reason behind much of our grief and our grievances is actually our own ingratitude. We fail to see the blessings of Allah. And this is shaitan's assault on the human being. To make the human being focus on what is gone. To dwell on the problem and not seek the solution. Not see what Allah has given as a substitute. The thing is that life is ever changing. So we must Learn gratitude. And gratitude is not always easy. It doesn't always come naturally. You have to practice it. You have to consciously practice it. You have to consciously bring to mind the blessings that Allah has given you. So he said that I will come to them from all directions. And notice how he didn't say I will come from above them. Because he knew that above them is Allah. So your connection with Allah is always open. قَالَ خُرُجْ مِنْهَا مَذْؤُومًا مَدْحُورًا Allah said, get out of here. Reproached and expelled. Whoever follows you among them, I will surely fill hell with you all together. So this shows us that the way of shaitan is the way that leads to hell. And O Adam, dwell you and your wife in paradise and eat from wherever you will, but do not approach this tree, lest you be among the wrongdoers. But shaitan whispered to them. He started on the first day. To make apparent to them that which was concealed from them of their private parts. Shaitan wanted that their clothes which were given to them in Jannah would be taken away from them so that they would be exposed and they would be humiliated. So he said to Adam and Hawa that your Lord did not forbid you this tree except that you become angels or become of the immortal. He made them forget that they were not to stay in Jannah forever anyway. They were supposed to be in Jannah temporarily. They were supposed to go to earth. But he said that this tree, yani you have only been forbidden to eat from it so that you don't live here forever. So if you want to live here forever, then you must eat of the fruit of this tree. The thing is that shaitan makes sins attractive. And he makes us believe in the benefits of what Allah has forbidden. So that we make what is unlawful, lawful for ourselves. And he starts by making us think bad about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That your Lord forbade you from this so that you don't get this benefit. This is the trick of shaitan. This is his deception. So it is essential that we learn what those tricks are so that we can avoid them. And he swore to them. What a liar. But with false oaths, he managed to convince them. He said, indeed, I am to you from among the sincere advisors. So he made them fall through deception. And when they tasted of the tree, just tasted, their private parts became apparent to them. And they began to fasten together over themselves from the leaves of paradise. They were embarrassed. And their Lord called to them, Did I not forbid you from that tree and tell you that shaitan is to you a clear enemy? So remember, there are two kinds of sins. One type of sin is to refuse to obey Allah. And this is what Iblis did. And the other type of sin is to do what Allah has prohibited. And this is what Adam salam did. And both are wrong. So Adam and Hawa, qala, they both said, Rabbana ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا And if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Then we will surely be among the losers. And you see, this was the difference between Adam and Shaitan. When Shaitan erred, when Shaitan made a mistake, he insisted and persisted. When Adam salam erred, when he made a mistake, he left the sin and he repented. The fact is that we are not perfect. We will make mistakes. There will be slips and falls. But remember, there are two options. A person does not fall by choice. A person falls by accident. So when there is a slip, when there is a fall, we have two options. One is that we remain fallen. And the other is that we get up. We learn. And we dust off any dirt, any bad thing that has come on us. We dust it off. We straighten our clothes. We fix ourselves. And we continue.
This is what Adam alayhi salam did. And this is what we need to do. That when we make a mistake, when we commit a sin, don't remain fallen over there. No, get up and learn from that experience. That you know what? Because I tripped over this. This is how I fell. Recognize the way through which shaitan made you commit that sin. Recognize the pattern. Recognize the trick so that you can avoid it next time. And then don't make the mistake that Iblis made. You see, Iblis blamed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You put me in error. And this is a mistake that we also make a lot. That when something bad happens, we are quick to blame other people. I wasn't able to pray because, you know what, my mom never taught me. My mom never gave me the habit of praying regularly. So it's her fault, not my fault. Don't blame other people. And stop viewing yourself as a victim all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you ability. He has given you liberty. So use that. And yes, sometimes people do cause us harm, but stop viewing yourself as a victim. Some people view themselves as a victim of qadr, of divine decree. That you know what, because this is in my qadr, this is why I will never be a good person. Don't consider yourself to be a victim. Do something. You have the strength. You have the ability. Get up. Don't remain fallen. If Adam alayhi salam did it, you can also do it. This is proof. Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, they asked for forgiveness and mercy. Why? Because forgiveness removes the trouble that one suffers because of their sin. And rahma, mercy, brings good things and blessings. So they asked for maghfira and rahma. Allah said, descend, being to one another enemies. And for you on the earth is a place of settlement and enjoyment for a time. So being sent on earth was not a punishment. Adam alayhi salam was going to come on earth anyway. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. But before sending Adam alayhi salam to earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him who his enemy is. And that is shaitan. He said, therein you will live and therein you will die. And from it you will be brought forth. O children of Adam, we have bestowed upon you clothing to conceal your private parts and as adornment. So there are two objectives of clothing for both men and women. That first of all, clothing should cover us properly. And secondly, it should adorn us. It should beautify us. So clothing is not just for adornment. So don't compromise on the covering just for the sake of wearing nice clothes. وَلِبَاسُ taqwa, ذَلِكَ خَيْرٍ But the clothing of righteousness, that is best. That is from the signs of Allah that perhaps they will remember. لِبَاسُ taqwa is better. لِبَاسُ taqwa is clothing which reflects taqwa. Clothing which reflects piety and the fear of God. How? Because it conceals a person properly. It doesn't reveal a person's body. So, libasu taqwa is clothing that reflects that yes, this person has fear of God. So that clothing is not too tight or see-through or short. And the Prophet ﷺ warned us against this. He said there are two types among the people of hell whom I have not yet seen. And one of them is who? Women who are naked in spite of being dressed. So it's not enough to just put some clothes on. It's important to make sure that those clothes show taqwa. They are in align with the taqwa of Allah. That they cover properly. Libas taqwa is clothing which is piety itself. Meaning what really adorns a person before Allah and before people is what? Not their physical garments that they're wearing, but their Iman, their fear of Allah, their good behavior, their righteous actions. So remember, it is piety that conceals one's sins also. And it brings about forgiveness also. It is piety that beautifies a person more than fancy clothes beautify a disobedient person. So our focus should not only be on our physical clothing. That you know what? My clothes should be perfectly ironed and that there should be no flaw in them and they should be of the latest design and they should be new and they should be clean. Yes, that is all important. But more important is piety, righteous action, faith. Or libasu taqwa is the clothing that will be given because of taqwa. And it will be given where? In the hereafter. The clothing that the righteous will wear in paradise, 
It is ma yalbasuhu al-muttaqun. It is what the pious will wear on the day of judgment. So don't just be concerned about the expensive and fashionable clothes in this life. That all of your money and your attention is going into it. And that you don't care about the guidance of Allah regarding clothing. Prepare for what will adorn you in the hereafter. Prepare for what will clothe you on the day of judgment. Because remember, all people will rise from their graves unclothed on the day of judgment. And then they will be given clothing. Ibrahim a.s. will be the first one to be clothed on the day of judgment. Ya Bani Adam, O children of Adam, let not shaitan tempt you as he removed your parents from paradise, stripping them of their clothing to show them their private parts. Don't let shaitan convince you into dressing inappropriately so that you end up revealing your body or you end up committing sins that will be a cause of removal of your blessings, removal of your dignity. Indeed, shaitan sees you, he and his tribe from where you do not see them. So you have to be ever careful, very, very vigilant. You see in movies how, you know, a person is trying to protect themselves from an invisible enemy. And you can see the fear on the face. So this is our reality. Shaitan is our enemy who is out to harm us. So we can never ever let our guard down regarding any aspect of our lives. Indeed, we have made the devils allies to those who do not believe. And when they commit an immorality, you see the mushrikeen, when they would perform the tawaf around the Kaaba, they would do so while they were naked. Because they would say we should come before Allah in an all-natural state. They say, we found our fathers doing it. And Allah has ordered us to do it. Say, indeed, Allah does not order immorality. He never ordered you to do this. Do you say about Allah that which you do not know? Say, my Lord has ordered justice and that you maintain yourselves in worship of Him at every place of prostration and invoke Him, sincere to Him in religion, just as He originated you, you will return. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants ikhlas from us, that we worship Him with sincerity and we worship Him in the manner that He has legislated. A group of you He guided and a group deserved to be in error. Why? Indeed, they had taken the devils as allies instead of Allah while they thought they were guided. So, Ya Bani Adam, O children of Adam, take your adornment at every masjid. خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ masjid. Meaning when you worship Allah, then do so with your zina. What is zina? What is this adornment? It is clothing. Meaning dress appropriately when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure that your body is covered properly. Make sure that your clothing is not just covering you, but your clothing is clean also. You feel fresh because that affects your performance. So zina over here refers to nice clean clothes. And it also refers to miswak, that clean your mouth. Clean your teeth before worshipping Allah. And it also includes perfume, fragrance. But women, if they're going to the masjid, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to return to our masajid, women should not wear such a fragrance that spreads everywhere when they go to the masjid. Beautify and clean yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, when we're going to meet someone important, someone special, but when there's something important, we make sure that we're dressed nicely, that we are clean, our body doesn't smell. In a hadith we learn that when one of you prays, he should wear two garments. Because wearing two garments was like wearing proper clothing at that time, an upper and a lower garment. He said, wear two garments. Why? Because Allah is most deserving that you adorn yourself for Him. So we should pay attention to this. Especially because we are home these days. When we're praying salah, let us make sure that our body is not smelly. Our clothes are not smelly. Our mouth is not smelly. We should do something to clean our mouths, to clean our bodies. Freshen up, make wudu, shower, change your clothes. But be fresh and clean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deserving of that. And especially when going for masjid, one should pay attention to this because the Prophet ﷺ emphasized this a great deal. Taking a bath before going for Jumu'ah, wearing clean clothes. And also we learn about you know removing the extra hair from the body and clipping the nails, etc. All of this is part of adorning oneself. And Allah is most deserving of that. وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا And eat and drink, but be not excessive. Meaning, don't stuff yourself. 
eat and drink the lawful things, but don't eat so much that you stuff yourself. And this is especially relevant these days, that when you break your fast, then please don't stuff yourself. Why? Because then you will not be able to worship comfortably. You might actually fall asleep at the dinner table and not be able to pray any qiyamul layl. The Prophet ﷺ warned us. He said the worst vessel the son of Adam can fill is his stomach. And when we're fasting, we sort of pity ourselves that, you know, we're only eating two meals a day. The Prophet ﷺ's family did not eat two meals on one day, except that one of those two was dates. It was raw food. It was not cooked food. It was not prepared food. So one meal was cooked, the other was raw. We also learned that the people who most eat to their fill in this world will be the most hungry on the day of judgment. So let us adopt more simplicity in our food so that we can focus on ibadah. Let us adopt moderation in what we eat and eat what is tayyib so that what we eat also becomes a means of earning reward. إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Indeed, he does not like those who commit excess. Subhanallah. Allah does not like musrifeen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, before we start the next audio, um, I would like everyone to share. A lot of people have shared, which is very um, good. But anything else that you remember or you wrote down, they would like to share. I'm just going to read, going to read over some that we, some of the really good ones. Okay, the prophet said, "There's nothing heavier in this girl than good character." Yes, that was actually a very good one. I think it's something very practical and important. So the most heaviest thing on the scale on the Day of Judgment, is good character. Don't blame others for your mistakes. Yes, clip your nails before entering the masjid. Yes, clip your nails before entering the masjid. And on Fridays, those who eat most in the world will be the most hungry in the hereafter. Yeah, so don't fill your stomach too much. Okay, there's actually a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he mentions um, fill your stomachs with one-third food, one-third water, and one-third oxygen. Okay. I love the one about being silent. Yes, that was, um, I think, very practical as well. Because, you know, a lot of us, when we sit with people that we like, like our friends or family, you know, we just go on and on and on. And sometimes um, this ends up causing problems for us as well, okay? Sometimes we might say something that will hurt another person or something like that. So it's very important that we, you know, stay silent. And when we think it's beneficial, then we talk. Okay, practice patience by remembering the blessings of Allah. Yes, shaitan makes sins look good and attractive. Shaitan makes sins look attractive and makes the unlawful look lawful. Yeah, that's um, that, that actually happens a lot, especially these days, you know. The shaitan, he makes things that are very unlawful, maybe something like very big sins, look lawful or look, so, look normal or look, look all right. That's why it's very important to seek righteous knowledge because as we men- as we listen to as well, the rope of Allah is the Qur'an. When we don't learn the Qur'an, when we don't know what we're uh, reading, um, whether it's in prayer, whether it's in any part of our worship, we would never know the actual foundation of Islam because um, even the people that do know Arabic, uh, the Qur'an is, um, you know, it's a special book that we need to solidly uh understand and analyze okay you can't just know the language and and say oh you know i don't need to um study the quran everyone needs to study the quran we don't we do not know what may befall us so we should ask allah for forgiveness and well-being yes we never know what's coming okay so make sure you're always asking allah asking allah for guidance um forgiveness well-being Never be afraid to make dua when you committed a sin. Yes, don't blame other people and we should stop victimizing ourselves. Yes. Life is ever-changing, so we must learn gratitude. Yes, so we never obviously in uh, full health. Yeah, there's eight things that every person goes through and one of them are that um, a person 
in this world will go through health and periods of his life when he's ill. Okay, so now we're not healthy all the time. Sometimes we'll be healthy, sometimes we'll be very ill. So we all, and this doesn't just go for illness or healthiness, okay? It also goes for things like money. I guess sometimes we have a lot of money, sometimes we, we fall short of money. So it's very important that we learn to practice gratitude in every part of our life, yeah? Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal, all praises to Allah in every condition. The Quran will also make the questioning of the grave easy for you. Yes, um, we did. So the Quran will come as an intercessor for us on the day of judgment and in the grave. Yeah, when we worship Allah, we should have zina. Yes, so zina is like beauty. So when we worship Allah, we're wearing you know our cleanest clothes. Um, everything around us is clean. So we're not in like a dirty environment or maybe messy or somewhere that's disorganized. Okay, so everything is clean, clean clothes. We showered, you know, we spray a little bit of perfume. Obviously, not one going out, but um, when wish- worshiping Allah, modest clothing is very important as well. Um, again, we learned that the people or the women um, in Pacific who don't wear modest clothing or they're naked while still wearing clothing will be in the hellfire, okay? Every person will be ju- questioned on their judgment. judgment. Yes, no one will have excuses or will be given the pass just to go to Jannah, okay? Every single person will be questioned about his or her deeds. Now, we will start the next audio, inshallah. The next audio um, is from Ayahs uh, 32 to 87, and we will finish just a today, inshallah. Say, who has forbidden the adornment of Allah, which He has produced for His servants, and the good lawful things of provision? So we should not go to this other extreme, that we go on prohibiting the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made lawful. Say, they are for those who believe during the worldly life, but exclusively for them on the day of resurrection. Thus do we detail the verses for a people who know. So remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not forbidden us from using good things in life, whether it is good clothes or it is good food. No, it's not prohibited. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to be moderate and to eat what is lawful and to wear clothing that is appropriate. And also we see over here that the blessings of this world, whether it is clothing or food, they always have some kind of difficulty associated to them. The food that we eat, especially what is good for our health, is not always fun to eat. And then after we eat, then there is repercussions after that. We feel bloated, we feel tired, etc. Sometimes certain foods don't suit our health. And then when it comes to clothing, there's hardship in obtaining them, in maintaining them. So we see that in the hereafter, good things will be exclusively for those who believe. Meaning, they will enjoy them without any trouble or any hardship. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Say, my Lord has only forbidden immoralities, major sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. What is apparent of them and what is concealed. So whether an immorality is in speech or in action or in the mind, whether it is concealed from people or it is done in front of them. So it could be on the television or it could be on your phone so that only you can see it. It could be at a party at a theater, or it could be in the privacy of your home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden all immoralities, all obscene things. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained that the adultery of eyes is looking, the adultery of tongue is speaking, the soul desires and has a passion, and the private part confirms or falsifies it. So we have to be careful about our tongue also. That don't seek joy in talking about dirty things. Because the Prophet ﷺ was not fahish or mutafahish. He was not obscene or coarse. So we should also avoid mean language, dirty jokes, lewd expressions. Whether we express them in anger or comedy or pastime. We should avoid all of this. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, فحش and تفاحش, immorality, this has got nothing to do with Islam. Meaning they're not Islamic at all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like such people. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَاحِشَ الْمُتَفَحِشَ 
This is the reason why he has forbidden such things. So let us seek Allah's forgiveness for such behavior. And Allah has also forbidden sin, whether it is open or hidden, and oppression without right, and that you associate with Allah that for which He has not sent down any authority, and that you say about Allah that which you do not know. So be very, very careful when speaking about Allah. Make sure what you say is based on knowledge. ajal, And for every nation is a specified term. So when their term has come, they will not remain behind an hour, nor will they precede it. O children of Adam, if there come to you messengers from among you relating to you my verses, then whoever fears Allah and reforms, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Fear Allah and reform. Meaning, change your state. Change your actions according to the revelation that Allah has sent. But the ones who deny our verses and are arrogant toward them, those are the companions of the fire, they will abide therein eternally. And who is more unjust than one who invents about Allah a lie or denies his verses? Those will attain their portion of the decree until when our messengers come to them to take them in death. They will say, where are those you used to invoke besides Allah? They will say they have departed from us and will bear witness against themselves that they were disbelievers. Allah will say, enter among nations which had passed on before you of jinn and mankind into the fire. Every time a nation enters, it will curse its sister until when they have all overtaken one another therein. All of the nations piled up one over the other in hell. The last of them will say about the first of them, Our Lord, these had misled us. So give them a double punishment of the fire. He will say for each is double, but you do not know. So remember, no person can offload their share of punishment, their burden, on another. Each is responsible for what they have done. So be very careful when you follow someone. And the first of them will say to the last of them, then you had not any favor over us. So taste the punishment for what you used to earn. Indeed, those who deny our verses and are arrogant toward them, the gates of heaven will not be open for them. They will not be allowed to enter. Their souls will be rejected, thrown back down into the prison of Sidjin, nor will they enter paradise. This is as impossible as until a camel enters into the eye of a needle. And that is not going to happen ever. And thus do we recompense the criminals. They will have from hell a bed and over them coverings of fire. And thus do we recompense the wrongdoers. But those who believed and did righteous deeds, we charge no soul except within its capacity. Those are the companions of paradise. They will abide therein eternally. And we will have removed whatever is within their chests of resentment. This is the real beauty of Jannah, that hearts will be united while flowing beneath them are rivers. And they will say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is to Allah who has guided us to this. And we would never have been guided if Allah had not guided us. Certainly the messengers of our Lord had come with the truth. And they will be called, this is paradise, which you have been made to inherit for what you used to do. So in order to go to Jannah, amal is necessary. And even though our actions can never be enough, we should still do what we can. Because it is only by the favor of Allah that people will enter Jannah. And the companions of paradise will call out to the companions of the fire. We have already found what our Lord promised us to be true. Have you found what your Lord promised to be true? They will say yes. Then an announcer will announce among them, the curse of Allah shall be upon the wrongdoers who averted people from the way of Allah and sought to make it seem deviant while they were concerning the hereafter disbelievers. And between them will be a partition. So the people of Jannah in Jannah, the people of hell in hell. And on its elevations, meaning neither in Jannah nor in hell, stuck in the middle will be who? Men who recognize all by their mark. Who are these men on the A'raf? Their case is pending. So they will look towards Jannah and will recognize the people in Jannah. And they will recognize the people in hell also. Who are the people on the A'raf? It is said that these are people whose good deeds and bad deeds are equal. So they're neither going here nor there. So their case has been deferred. This is why we should not belittle any good deed and even any sin. Because one sin can be a cause of the scales to tip 
against our favor. And one good deed can be a cause of our entry into paradise. So do not belittle any good deed. Even if it is half a date that you can give, give it. Because perhaps that act of charity will save you from the fire of hell. And they call out to the companions of paradise, peace be upon you. They have not yet entered it, but they long intensely. And when their eyes are turned toward the companions of the fire, they say, our Lord, do not place us with the wrongdoing people. And the companions of the elevations will call to men within hell, whom they will recognize by their mark, saying, of no avail to you was your gathering and the fact that you were arrogant. Are these the ones whom you, meaning inhabitants of hell, swore that Allah would never offer them mercy? Meaning, aren't you the same people who used to say about those who are in Jannah now that Allah will never give them anything? Allah will never be merciful to them? Why did they think like this? Because the believers suffered in the world. And this is true. The believer does experience many trials in the world. But there is a common misconception that only if a person has wealth and prosperity in this life, will they have prosperity in the next life. But that is not true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests His servants, sometimes through poverty, sometimes through other forms of hardship. But those who remain patient through those hardships, and those who remain true to Allah through the ups and downs of life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit them into Jannah. وَدُخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ تَحْزَنُونَ It will be said to them, enter paradise. No fear will there be concerning you, nor will you grieve. And the companions of the fire will call to the companions of paradise. Pour upon us some water or from whatever Allah has provided you. They will say, indeed, Allah has forbidden them both to the disbelievers who took their religion as distraction and amusement and whom the worldly life deluded. So today we will forget them just as they forgot the meeting of this day of theirs and for having rejected our verses. We see here that the people of hell will beg for water. They will request the people of paradise, give us some water or some food. But they will be told, no, this is forbidden on you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden some things for us in this life. And if we don't respect that, then the blessings of Allah will be forbidden on such people in the hereafter. Remember, giving water to the creation is a form of charity. And when a person realizes that there are too many sins, then they should give water to others. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu was asked which charity is the best. He said water. Don't you see that when the people of hell will beg, they will first beg for water? Meaning what the creation needs the most is water. What people need on earth, what living things need most, even animals, is water. So give water to the creation today so that you are safe tomorrow. Some of the tabi'un would say that the person whose sins are many, then he must give water to others. Because Allah forgave the prostitute who gave water to a dog. So what do you think of the person who gives water to? A human being. Not a dog, but a human being. And giving water to the entire creation. Whoever comes before you and you have the opportunity to serve them water, then don't be stingy. And these days, especially when you're at home, when it's time to break the fast, then be eager to be the one who gives water to people to break their fast. Sometimes we become very stingy over here, very irritated. That what is the matter with you? You cannot even get water yourself? You expect me to serve you water also? At the time of suhoor, at the time of iftar, be eager to serve water to people. The Prophet ﷺ said, the one who has a well dug, and then any thirsty creature, human, bird, drinks from it, he will be rewarded for it until the day of judgment. A man asked the Prophet ﷺ that which sadaqa do you like the most? And the Prophet ﷺ said, water. So do not withhold water. When you have an opportunity to give water, give it. Because in another hadith we learn that the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not even speak to, nor look at, nor purify them, and for them will be a painful punishment. Of them is the person who has extra water, but he doesn't let the travelers drink from it. So don't be stingy with water. And we had certainly brought them a book which we detailed by knowledge, فَصَّلْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ as guidance and mercy to a people who believe. So the people of faith 
live by this book? Do they await accept its result? The day its result comes, those who had ignored it before will say, the messengers of our Lord had come with the truth. So are there now any intercessors to intercede for us? Or could we be sent back to do other than what we used to do? They will have lost themselves, and lost from them is what they used to invent. Indeed, your Lord is Allah, who created the heavens and earth in six days, and then established himself above the throne. So remember, Allah is above the throne, not nowhere or everywhere. He covers the night with the day, chasing it rapidly, and he created the sun, the moon, and the stars, subjected by his command. Unquestionably, His is the creation and the command. Blessed is Allah, Lord of the worlds. So choose to surrender Him. Udu'u rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufiyatan. Call upon your Lord in humility and privately. Indeed, He does not like transgressors. So when you make dua, when you perform any act of worship, then exhibit humility, not arrogance. Don't complain to people as if you are doing Allah a favor. Because this is sometimes a mistake that we make while we're fasting. That from the beginning to the end, we're constantly complaining, Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so sleep deprived. Oh, I'm so thirsty. Refrain from this. Exhibit humility before Allah. That, Ya Allah, accept this deed from me. And be khufya. Meaning, be private about your good deeds. Refrain from showing off. And privately cry before Allah. Because this is the only way that you can connect with your Lord. Ibn Qayyim said that in the heart is a loneliness that cannot be removed except by engaging with Allah in private. In it is a sadness that cannot be removed except by knowing Him and being honest with Him. In it is an agitation that cannot be made still except by running towards Him. So call upon Allah with humility and in privacy. And cause not corruption upon the earth after its reformation. And invoke him in fear and aspiration. وَدِعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا Stay between hope and fear. Indeed, the mercy of Allah is near to the doers of good. Some people have an extreme amount of fear of Allah. Unhealthy fear. That is not good. It is not permissible. Fear that makes a person despair is not permissible. Some people have no fear at all. So we should remain in the middle. When it comes to hope, also some people have way too much hope. So they go on doing whatever they want, committing all of the sins, not obeying Allah, and they have hope that Allah will forgive them. Hope should not make a person negligent and careless. It should not make a person fearless. We should have fear and we should have hope. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُرْسِلُ الرِّيَاحَ بُشْرًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِي And it is he who sends the winds as good tidings before his mercy until when they have carried heavy rain clouds, we drive them to a dead land and we send down rain therein and bring forth thereby some of all the fruits. Thus will we bring forth the dead, perhaps you may be reminded. And the good land, its vegetation emerges by permission of its Lord, but that which is bad Nothing emerges except sparsely, with difficulty. Thus do we diversify the signs for a people who are grateful. The rain, the water is the same. But depending on the land, the produce, the outcome is different. And such are the hearts of people also. Remember, revelation is like rain. And the hearts of people are like soil, earth. So each person responds differently to the Qur'an. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clean our hearts, to strengthen our hearts, so that we benefit greatly from the book of Allah. Now the stories of the previous prophets are mentioned. We had certainly sent Nuh to his people. And he said, O my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of a tremendous day. Said the eminent among his people. Indeed, we see you in clear error. Nuh said, O my people, there is not error in me. But I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I convey to you the messages of my Lord and advise you. And I know from Allah what you do not know. Then do you wonder that there has come to you a reminder from your Lord through a man from among you? Is this the difficulty? That he may warn you and that you may fear Allah so you may receive mercy? But they denied him. So we saved him and those who were with him in the ship. And we drowned those who denied our signs. Indeed, they were a blind people, not physically blind, 
but spiritually blind, who refused to see the truth. And to the Ad, we sent their brother Hud. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than Him. Then will you not fear Him? Said the eminent ones, who disbelieved among His people. Indeed, we see you in foolishness. And indeed, we think you are of the liars. Hud a.s. said, O oh my people, there is not foolishness in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. Subhanallah. Allah chose the best human beings to be His prophets. Yet, people gave them such wrong labels that you are in error or you are foolish. And look at the akhlaq of the prophets. Nuh a.s. said, there is no error in me. Hud a.s. said, there is no foolishness in me. He didn't say, you are in error or you are foolish. No, this was not their response. And this really shows that they were sincere. They wanted the best for their people. So they tolerated the rudeness, the harshness of their people so much. He said, I convey to you the messages of my Lord, and I am to you a trustworthy advisor. Then do you wonder that there has come to you a reminder from your Lord through a man from among you, that he may warn you? And remember, when he made you successors after the people of Nuh and increased you in stature extensively, فَذْكُرُوا آلَى اللَّهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So remember the favors of Allah that you might succeed. Success is a result of gratitude. They said, have you come to us that we should worship Allah alone and leave what our forefathers have worshipped? Then bring us what you promise us, if you should be of the truthful. Subhanallah. When it comes to religion, people hold on to tradition so strongly. But when it comes to other things, we always want newer designs and newer homes and newer clothing. We don't look at how people dressed or ate or how they lived 50 years ago. No. When it comes to worldly matters, we want to be as advanced as possible. But when it comes to religion, we cling to tradition. We don't want to learn the religion, what it really is. We don't want to understand it. We don't want to own it. We just want to do what our forefathers used to do. This behavior needs to be corrected. Hud salam said, Already have defilement and anger fallen upon you from your Lord. Do you dispute with me concerning mere names? You have named them, you and your fathers, for which Allah has not sent down any authority? Then wait, indeed, I am with you among those who wait. So we saved him and those with him by mercy from us. And we eliminated those who denied our signs and they were not at all believers. And to the Thamud, we sent their brother Salih alayhi salam. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. There has come to you clear evidence from your Lord. This is the she-camel of Allah sent to you as a sign because they demanded that from him. They said, show us this miracle. Only then we will believe you. And what happened? Salih a.s. showed them the very miracle that they demanded. But then he also told them, leave her to eat within Allah's land and do not touch her with harm, lest there seize you a painful punishment. And remember, when he made you successors after the Ad, meaning the nation of Ad, and settled you in the land, and you take for yourselves palaces from its plains and car from the mountain's homes, meaning look at your craftsmanship, Look at the homes that you build and the fact that you dig out, you carve out your houses in mountains. Then remember the favors of Allah and do not commit abuse on the earth, spreading corruption, said the eminent ones who were arrogant among his people to those who were oppressed, to those who believed among them specifically. That do you actually know that Salih is sent from his Lord? Why do you believe him? They said, indeed we, in that with which he was sent, are believers. Said those who were arrogant, indeed we, in that which you have believed, are disbelievers. So how would they understand anything? Because of this bias that they had. So they hamstrung the she-camel, they killed her, and were insolent toward the command of their Lord, and said, O Salih, bring us what you promise us, if you should be of the messengers. Subhanallah. They demanded the miracle, they were shown that miracle. And now they killed the camel and they said, bring it on, bring the punishment. Look at the height of their arrogance. So what happened? So the earthquake seized them and they became within their home corpses, fallen prone. And he turned away from them and said, oh my people, I had certainly conveyed to you the message of my Lord and I had advised you. But the problem is that you do not like advisors. وَلَكِنْ لَا تُحِبُّونَ النَّاصِحِينَ The thing is that the people who follow their desires do not like good advice. 
But still, keep advising no matter what. Because the Prophet ﷺ gave good news to the ghuraba, the strangers. And when he was asked, who are they? He said, الَّذِينَ يُصْلِحُونَ إِذَا فَسَدَ nas. There are those who set things right when people have become corrupt. When people cause corruption, they focus on creating positive change. And we had sent Lut when he said to his people, Do you commit such immorality as no one has preceded you with from among the worlds? What was that immorality? Indeed, you approach men with desire instead of women. Rather, you are transgressing people. But the answer of his people was only that they said, Evict them from your city. Indeed, there are men who keep themselves pure. They boasted over their sin and they mocked at the Prophet. So we saved him and his family, except for his wife. Why? She was of those who remained with them. Because she agreed with them. She sympathized with them. She supported them. Even though she was from the family of Lut a.s. And we rained upon them a rain of stones. Then see, how was the end of the criminals? And to the people of Madian, we sent their brother Shu'aib. He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than Him. There has come to you clear evidence from your Lord. So fulfill the measure and wait. Because they used to cheat a lot. So he said, fulfill the measure and wait. Do not be dishonest and do not deprive people of their due and cause not corruption upon the earth after its reformation. That is better for you if you should be believers. Meaning what you earn through lawful means, through honesty, is better for you than what you earn through dishonesty and cheating. And do not sit on every path, threatening and averting from the way of Allah those who believe in Him, seeking to make it seem deviant. And remember when you were few and He increased you and see... How was the end of the corruptors? Learn from history. And if there should be a group among you who has believed in that with which I have been sent and a group that has not believed, meaning there is this division right now, then be patient until Allah judges between us. And He is the best of judges. So be patient and wait. And with time, truth will become even more manifest. It is already manifest. But those who refuse to see the truth, then there will come a point when they will be forced to see the truth, when they will have no option but to accept it. But then it will be too late to change. So it is necessary that a person looks past their biases, that a person is not arrogant, and with a genuine, sincere heart, they seek guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide the person who wants guidance. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Inshallah we'll conclude here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah we finished just eight. What did you learn guys? Please share in the chat box. Can you hear me? That's good. Water is the best charity. That's good. Be moderate. That's nice. Good, alhamdulillah. Now, now, inshallah, we will move to over.
Kahoot. Everyone are ready for Kahoot? Okay, I will share with you my screen. Give me one second. All right, now inshallah we will start. Good job, Amina. Good job, Amina. Hello, my body. Good job. Good. 
good job, mashallah. Allahumma barik. Allahumma barik. Amin. MashaAllah, Apra. Allah ma barik arfa That's good. Mm, number three, Hiba. Number two, Afra. And number one, Arfa. Masha Allah. Allahumma barik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. Insha Allah. <laughs> 